You're listening to the Be A Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 136. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello, how are you doing today? If you are listening to this episode when it comes out, it's Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone who doesn't celebrate Christmas. This is usually a time of year where we go to holiday parties and get to hug all of our loved ones, and that's not happening in a lot of people's homes this year. So I just want to send a virtual hug to you. And I want to acknowledge the sacrifices so many of you made this year to keep yourself your loved ones, and your friends healthy this year and into the future. No matter how we think our lives should be and how others should behave, we have control of two things, how we respond to circumstances and our intentions. I love the word intention. For me, that word really encompasses how we think about our circumstances, but it also encompasses an energy and focus that we bring moment to moment in our lives. It guides our decisions. And the last several podcasts have been about refocusing our intentions on what we want to create in our lives. This time of year is traditionally when a lot of us take a look back on the choices we've made and what we want our next year to look like. And I'm not a fan of simply making changes when we hit a new year because I think we must consistently reevaluate and adjust our intentions, our compass towards what we want most. I know from personal experience that we don't want to waste our time working towards a goal that isn't going to create what we want in our lives. We want to know that what we're choosing is the right decision so we can focus all of our intention on it, all of our energy on it. But is there truly a right decision? We're going to talk a little bit about that today, how to make a decision for ourselves that is right for us. I want to give you some food for thought when it comes to making decisions for the future. Whenever you are listening to this, whether it's the new year or the middle of the year, I want you to really think about this because a pros and cons list is not the tool you want to be using to decide how you want to intentionally design your life. Despite the fact that we're type A lawyers, and I'm assuming you are one since you're listening to this podcast, lawyers are human and we have the same difficulty making decisions for our future as other humans. We have the same thoughts that come up that scare us off from pursuing what we really want. So if you're having difficulty choosing a goal and have many opportunities that you want to pursue, you are absolutely human. In the next several episodes of this podcast, I'm going to talk to you about studying ourselves and getting to know ourselves on a more nuanced level, but I want to give you something to think about right now while you're deciding on your choices for the upcoming year. This topic was inspired by one of my coaching sessions where I was coaching a lawyer who had multiple passions and knew she didn't have the time and energy to put into all of them and still be an amazing lawyer at the office, right? It's not just time management, it's management of our intent. There were a few traps I saw her fall into, and I've fallen into them before, and this episode is really designed to help move you past indecision and into action on your goals and understanding what your brain is doing and why it might be difficult for you to choose a goal. So here are five essential considerations for you when making a decision about how to decide on a goal to pursue with your full focus and intention. First of all, it's important to understand that the only reason we want to achieve any goal is because of how we think it will make us feel when we have it. Ask yourself what you're making it mean about yourself if you achieve your goal. Will it mean that you are finally able to live up to your parents' approval, for instance? That's probably not so fulfilling because if we're trying to please someone outside of ourselves, that intention won't drive us to choose what's best for us. 
I still remember when I graduated from law school, I was going to graduation with my parents and I told them I got a job at the DA's office. Dad made an offhand, totally neutral remark that if he had been a lawyer, he thought he'd work for the other side. It actually hurt when he said that. He didn't mean it to, but it was at that point that I recognized that I had set out to achieve a lot of my goals to make my dad proud, get his approval, instead of pursuing what I really wanted. Getting A's in high school, check. Going to UCLA, check. Going to law school, check. Getting a great job, check. It's not that he wasn't proud of me. It's that I had received validation for my achievements from him, and if I wanted to receive validation, I needed to give it to myself. What I needed to learn was that validation could only come from within. I needed to reconsider my intentions when pursuing a goal. Other people's congratulations is a great cherry on top, but I didn't want that disapproval of others to play a part in what I ultimately chose to pursue because I wasn't doing it for them. I was doing it for me. I learned to choose goals differently. I decided to choose goals to show myself what was possible for me. And I wanted to pursue what would bring me my biggest growth. And what I didn't realize at the start of this work on myself was that I would also become an example to others of what's possible for themselves. A second consideration when choosing your goal is question everything your brain tells you is true. Play devil's advocate on everything it says to you. For instance, and I'm not alone in this because I know a lot of lawyers have this same desire, I've had the thought about writing a book. My brain has told me in response to this, I'm not really a writer. Then I remembered I write all the time. Instagram posts, these podcasts, emails. Heck, I write briefs. I'm a writer already. I just haven't written in book format before. And book formats are all different shapes and sizes. My brain tells me a lot of other things too, which aren't true. Like, I don't know how to write a book. It is such a liar. I know exactly how to write a book. I sit down, I write, and I keep writing consistently. Then I edit it. Then I find an editor to help me. It's not hard. Now my brain also tells me things that are true, but they could be paralyzing to me moving forward on a goal if I didn't question them. So for instance, it's true that I don't know how to market a book, but I don't need to know that to write a book. And actually, if I question that thought even further, I have knowledge of marketing, so of course I know how some of the things to market a book. And I know that there are people out there, and I know specifically there are certain people I would go to to show me how to market a book. I can figure all of that out later. I don't need that to write a book. Your brain will tell you other lies that seem true, like I don't have time. The truth is, if it's really important to us, we will make the time. Seriously, question everything your brain tells you is true. This is going to be part of having your own back as you pursue your goal, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. The third thing to consider, ask yourself why you're gravitating to each goal you're considering. Decide if you like that reason. When you're choosing between multiple opportunities, it doesn't always help to do a pro and con list. That is far too simple a tool for our complex brain, and that brain is going to steer you in the direction of what seems easiest instead of what will serve your higher self and feel most fulfilling. The survival instinct in our brain is strong, and if your goal compromises the perception of safety your brain has, then it will give you blind spots. Also, without someone to help us question what's going on in our minds, we don't always see it. That's why I have a coach. That's why people hire me as a coach. Coaching helps us see what our brain hides from us. Let me give you an example. My client believed that she shouldn't pursue one of her goals because she didn't have as much experience in that particular area as she did with another opportunity she was considering pursuing. And when I questioned her more about this, she realized that she actually did have experience in both of these areas and that her brain was ignoring information. Once she could see that she did have experience in both of these areas, she didn't make a decision on what she wanted based on misinformation. She could know that when she decided on her goal that she could like the reasons she chose it instead of relying on that misinformation to make the decision for her. If you're gravitating towards a goal because it seems easier than the other ones, another thing to ask yourself is, is it more important for me to feel safe 
or fulfilled? Which goal feels more fulfilling when you imagine the end result? All right, so number four, know that no matter which goal you decide to pursue, you are going to have the same thoughts afterwards. These afterthoughts are like the bad aftertaste you get when you had something to drink and then you are regretting it immediately. As soon as you, as soon as you decided, you're going to think something like, maybe I made the wrong decision. I should have thought about X before making that decision. I didn't think about that. Maybe I should go back to that decision. I don't know how to fill in the blank. That sounds hard. Maybe I should rethink this. What if I waste a lot of time, energy, money on this goal and it's the wrong one for me? Maybe I should just be happy with what I have. My life is pretty amazing. Maybe that's where I should be focusing my energy right now. Maybe I should just put everything on hold. Let me say that again. No matter which goal you decide to pursue, you are going to have the same afterthoughts. All right, be ready for them. This is all normal. Your brain is thinking these thoughts to keep you from taking any meaningful action towards your goal. Goals are scary because we haven't shown ourselves we can do it yet. That's where the next essential piece of decision making comes up. But I want you to really think about this because any goal that you choose, you will have these same thoughts and your brain is going to try to make you wrong. So it's important that you understand that this is just a natural function of your brain The fifth thing that I'm going to talk to you about is what you need to focus on next. Number five, have your own back once you've made a decision. When you have your own back, you are telling yourself, I've decided, let's do this. I'm scared and that's okay. I can figure this out. It sounds hard and that's okay. Goals are supposed to be a little scary because that's where the growth is. That's what you're telling yourself each time you find that you're doubting and then you reorient yourself, you get back into the intention that you had and you say, yes, I've got my own back on this. When we first think about our goals, we feel excited with a little dash of fear. There's possibility there. There's so much excitement about what's new and what could happen. We haven't really settled into the fact that we've charged ourselves with the responsibility of making a goal a reality. And once that settles into our brain, it freaks out. It gets scared. We believe that once we choose the quote unquote right goal, then we're going to feel excited about our choice all the time, that we're never going to have doubts, that it's going to just feel easy and super awesome all the time. And when we don't feel that way about it, our brain thinks there's something wrong. Nothing has gone wrong. This is normal. Fear, doubt, overwhelm, worry, all of this is normal. Those feelings are all coming from how we think about our goal. And when this happens, it's up to us to catch it and coach ourselves on it. You can hire a coach for this, but you can do this yourself too. This is when you remind yourself of why you made this decision in the first place and remind yourself of the vision you have for yourself and your world. So for example, sometimes clients come to me and they realize they've been taking lots of passive action towards their goals instead of taking massive action that's going to help them get closer to achieving their goals. And I've experienced this myself. They will do extensive research, listen to podcasts, take courses, but they're not doing the things that are going to move them, move the needle on their goal. It's like reading lots of books about how to write a book, but never scheduling time to sit down each morning to write a single page. Once they hire a coach, they're taking responsibility for having their own back and starting to do the mental work needed to generate the time and the energy and the inspiration to pursue their goal and make it a reality. It's not to say it's not going to be uncomfortable. You can listen to episode 135 if you want to hear more about discomfort and how to handle that when you're approaching a goal. But when you have your own back, you're doing the self-study needed so that you can see when you're not thinking what you need to think to take massive action. You recognize, this is what I want you to see here, you start recognizing that you're taking in a lot of information, but you're not doing anything with it. So it's like you want to write a book, and so what you do is you get all the paper, you get um, your computer set up, you get the program you want to use, you get your pen, you get it on the calendar, you you know start reading books about it, you start listening to podcasts about it, and then you don't sit down and start writing. That's all passive action. 
It's important that you just start getting an awareness that this is happening and then you can ask yourself why. Your actions are always being driven by a feeling. So what are you feeling when you decide to listen to a podcast instead of taking the massive action you planned? Maybe it's something like overwhelm or fear. Let's say you feel overwhelmed and then you say to yourself, okay, so I'm feeling overwhelmed. I wonder why. Then you know it's from a thought, right? So our thoughts generate feelings in our body and our feelings are what generate actions that will create our result. So you know it's from a thought, what are you thinking? Maybe it's something like, I don't know where to start and that's what's creating the overwhelm. Then you can question that thought and begin to see that that's a normal thought your brain has when you sit down to do the real work on your goal. You just know that, yes, okay, I'm sitting down to write, of course I'm feeling overwhelmed, now what? And then you have the opportunity to say, okay, let me question that thought. I know exactly where to start. I'm sitting here. All I have to do is just start writing. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be amazing. I don't have to be Stephen King on the first go. It's just I'm writing. Okay, let's do this. And you take 30 minutes to write. So you get to really start to coach yourself when you start getting this awareness. And so that's what I want you to see here with this fifth step, having your own back, is that now it's up to you to begin coaching yourself to then achieve your goal. It doesn't just feel easy unless you start creating that momentum yourself and you start thinking those thoughts that are gonna help you create that momentum. Okay, so here's a quick recap on how to choose the goal you want to go all in on. Number one, understand that the only reason we want to achieve any goal is because of how we think it will make us feel. Life is 50-50. You are never going to feel better when you get there. It's like we think that the grass is greener on the other side. It's not. Learn to love where you are right now and enjoy the journey. That's really the fun of this, right? The reason that we do a goal is not to achieve something like a monetary value. It is so that we can see who we can become. All right, number two, question everything your brain tells you is true. Play devil's advocate on everything it says to you. Three, ask yourself why you are gravitating to each goal you're looking at. Decide if you like that reason. Four, know that no matter which goal you decide to pursue, you will have the same thoughts afterwards. Don't let that trip you up, okay? Just know that your brain is going to have standard operating procedure. It's going to come at you with all of this doubt and worry that you've made the wrong choice. I want you to know that's normal. You're going to get that no matter what goal you pursue. Number five, have your own back once you've made a decision. If you loved this episode... I would really appreciate it if you shared a snapshot of you listening on Instagram, maybe tag me in it at dina.cataldo. And another way you can support this podcast is always by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast. Thank you so much. I will talk to you next week. We're going to dig into more about how to do the self-study on ourselves and really start recognizing some of those patterns that come up so that we can catch ourselves in the act. And then when we're telling ourselves something like, well, I don't have enough time or I'm disorganized, whatever our thoughts are, we are able to catch our brain in the lies. And when you are ready to go all in on yourself to create the time you need to build your practice and overcome overwhelm, come and work with me. The first step is to set up a strategy session with me. You can book a call with me at dinacataldo.com. All right. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.